This is Tim Newsom here again with the master clockmaker Mark Taylor and I'm going to try to find out from him today why you should have confidence in buying your bracket clock from him. There seem to me Mark such a variety. Could you start us off and explain about bracket clocks? What yes. do you have in terms of period for instance? Yeah it's an absolute minefield. There seem to be more variants with an English bracket clock than any other clock. Um, the main period we like to deal with is the Georgian period. That's a long period. It, it is, yes. And, and many, many variables and styles of clock can be covered within that period. Uh, they seem more finite than the Regency and later Victorian period. And it's just they've still, at this, period, this era, they've still got the quality, the individuality of them, uh, the beauty in, in the, the, the make and the appearance. So there's not much that's Victorian here? No, no there isn't. We have one or two Victorian examples because some people specifically want that for the Victorian furniture. But we find really that if you if you can, it's this is George and that's the uh, the style you want to go for. Why do they have handles? Haha, <laughs> it's funny you should ask me that. And a lot of people don't realise they actually have handles so that they can be carried around, in particular, up to bed with you at night. Right. They most of them have a verge escapement, even though the more accurate anchor escapement that we used in clocks at that stage, bracket clocks retained the verge escapement because it was much more robust. You didn't have the delicate suspension and delicate pallets that would break. So you could actually carry this thing up to bed with you at night, with it still ticking, even though you're supposed to part the pendulum. And that way, if it took you a minute to go up to stairs, up, up to bed, then it would still keep running and you wouldn't lose that time. This is also why a lot of them have a strike silent dial in the arch. So what you would do is you'd carry it to bed, put it on silent in the arch, and then of course the hourly striking wouldn't wake you. But if you awoke, you see this cord I'm here. I'm just wondering about it. Yeah. That's right. If you awoke, awoke in the night and wanted to know what time it was, if you pulled that cord, it then on demand struck. And some of them, um, such as this example, will give you the time to the nearest 15 minutes. All right. What sort of state do your clocks arrive in when you find them? Oh, absolutely. A lot of them absolutely neglected. Um, escapements converted to anchor. Uh, needing a lot of work where needing correcting but that doesn't matter I will only go as I've said before for the originality and as long as it's original the condition is immaterial because we can virtually do anything so do you give any guarantee of um, authenticity and originality yes yes I won't buy a clock as I said before that it is authentic and we give a full guarantee of it working like the maker did originally and also they get our famous tab of course engraved with the individual number stating that I restored it and it is an authentic piece. Do they all strike? I heard one striking just now, do they all strike? Most of them strike, some of them only strike on demand and they're called silent pulls. You very rarely get a timepiece it doesn't strike but again that comes with the silent pull so that if you need to know the time it will tell you on demand it's not going to interrupt you while you're you're discussing things with your neighbor or your landlady or playing whist and things like that which you'll be aware of there's a lot of variety of sizes and shapes what's your favorite my favorite i think it's really got to be the inverted bell top ebonized style especially in miniature like this one right do you want to tell us anything about this particular clock because he's here with us yeah this is a nice one this is one we've it's restored it strikes it's got ah, no no it doesn't no, no, no. that mislead you the, the, the maker felt that it's, it's just a timepiece silent pull but the maker felt that with just the one winding hole on the right it looked on there looked to be something missing so he's put a false winding arbor and hole on the left which is actually too big to get the key on so this is a timepiece, but will strike to the nearest quarter when you pull the cord. This is a balancing act, so that as you look at the clock, it just appears more balanced. That's right. Aesthetics only. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 
and it's it's a very very fine piece and the proportions are unusually small it's beautiful it's got its original Burgess gateman and great back plates it, this actually ticks all the boxes oh your clocks london made mostly mostly they are but they Really, if you get me in the subject of bracket clocks, we could go on and on and on. It's not something we, don't we really want have that, time for today. No, <laughs> we certainly don't want that <laughs> uh, because our cameraman is waving at us. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we've established that if someone walks in here, they are going to find exactly what they're getting and they're going to get a guarantee. Um, Absolutely. For the moment, we'll leave it at that and we'll yeah. look at something in more detail later. Yes, look forward to it. Thank you, Mark. We'll see you next time. Thank you, Tim.